Hello everyone, welcome to Computer Science 350, lecture number 20, right? Um, today we'll be talking about push down automata. Okay, I want to quickly introduce that formally, and uh, we'll take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, so um, PDAs are like NDAs, right? But have an extra component called a stack. The, the stack provides additional memory beyond the finite amount of states. Okay, final amount of states. So that was one of the problems. Uh, remember when we were talking about an FASD phase, the this number of states have to have to be finite. Has to be finite. Um, and that creates only finite amount of memory which we can use but for PDA we also have a stack and that's uh, potentially infinite okay um, da, 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 da. yeah okay so the stack allows uh, PDAs to recognize some non-regular languages for example, 0 to the n, 1 to the n, the one we talked about before. Okay. Um, a PDA can write symbols on the stack. Okay, so basically push, push symbols on top of the stack and read them back later. Okay, so push and pop. Uh, write in a symbol pushes down all other symbols on the stack. Okay, so that's basically how um, any kind of stack works, right? At any time, the symbol on the top of the stack can be read and removed. Okay, so again, um, if I was trying to kind of show that, it basically would look like this, like a regular stack, right? And here I can put some kind of symbols, like A, B, C, D, for example. And then whenever I want to read from the stack, I, of course, can only access top of the stack. So I would gonna, I'm going to read D, not C, not B, not A. Okay, I'm going to remove D. And then um, if I read again, I'm going to read C, B, and A. So just, again, regular, regular stuff. Um, you guys should be pretty clear. You should be familiar with that. Okay. Um, hold on. Writing a symbol on the stack is referred to as pushing. And removing is called popping. Okay, please take notes by the way and submit them at the, at the end of the day. Okay, um, what? Yeah, so let's talk about zero to then one to then. So zero to then one to then language, right? So what do we know about that language? No. Well, okay, so z uh, 0 to then, 1 to then. I'll write it like this. Okay, so the problem with the DFAs and NFAs was the fact that we were not able to create an uh, infinite amount of states, right, to memorize how many zeros we had, how many ones we had. But in this case, we have an infinite stack, right? So we can basically, um, as we read in zeros, right, so let's say that's our string, like huge amount of zeros, right? And a huge amount of ones. Um, so when we process that, we can basically, as we read in zeros, we can push them on top of the stack, right? And at the end of uh, reading the first half, we're going to have as many zeros as we read. And then as we read in ones, every time I'm reading one, I'm going to pop zero, one zero from the stack. Okay. 
So again, let's draw that. So let's say that's our stack. I'm going to read and push a bunch of zeros. Okay, so let's say there is a millions of zeros. And then when I'm reading ones, once I'm reading uh, a one right over here, I'm going to remove one zero. I'm reading the second one, removing second zero. Reading read the third one, removing third zero. And if at the end of reading the entire the entire thing, I have completely empty stack, that means I read, I don't know, millions of zeros and exactly the same number of ones. So that is the rule. That's the rule. So if at the end of the day I have exactly uh, absolutely empty stack, that means number of zeros is exactly the same as number of ones. Okay, and um, that's it. That means we need to accept. Okay. Now let's imagine um, that this is not true. Let's imagine that we have, for example, something like this. Uh, let's say three zeros to ones. Okay, so we have three zero uh, more zeros than ones. What are we going to do? Um, again, we're going to read three zeros. Okay, and then when I'm reading the first one, I'm popping off the first zero. When I'm reading the second one, I'm popping off this zero, uh, this zero, and that's the end of the string, right? So since my stack is not empty, I cannot accept. Okay, so that kind of prevents us from accepting uh, the strings like that, right? So the the stack needs to be empty in order to accept. Okay. Um, yeah, hope it makes sense, okay? So this strategy works for strings like that, right? So it's not going to accept them. Now, if we have um, the opposite situation, right? We have more zeros than ones. Then let's imagine what's gonna happen. I'm reading two zeros, right? So I'm reading zero and zero. And then I'm reading the first one, removing zero. Reading second one, removing zero. And now I'm trying to read the third one and I can't pop anything off anymore. Uh, that's kind of gets us to the trap state and we need to reject okay so we kind of get stuck there we automatically reject so this situation is not going to work for our strategy uh, it's not going to be accepted with our strategy which is exactly what we need okay who makes sense hope it makes sense yeah okay um, so what should I tell you uh, let's let's um, let's draw that first off let's draw that. That's something which I drew last time, right? So the way it's gonna work um, is the following. Hold on, no, 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 no. Hold on. Um. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the first state, the first state, and that's going to be accepting, right? Um, some kind of like A or Q, Q1. Then we're gonna go to another state, then go another state then go to another state and um, this one is rejecting this one is rejecting and this one is accepting okay so um, the idea is the idea is um, we somehow need to understand where is the top of the stack where is the top of, uh, sorry uh, where's the bottom of the stack right so um, for example again when we Let's say we pushed like millions of zeros, then we popped them off, right? How do we know that we reached the bottom of the stack? In other words, how do we know that the stack is empty? So in order to do that, what we're doing, we're creating an artificial symbol, which does not have to be, in, which has to be not in the alphabet, right? So in our case, the alphabet is zero, 01, right? So we're going to create an artificial zero, which is not in the alphabet, which would signify that the stack is empty. Okay, so usually it's either a triangle or some kind of a dollar symbol. So usually, like in, in my case, I'm going to use, I'm going to be using dollar symbol. What does it mean? That means if I want to pop a symbol and it happens to be a dollar symbol, that means at any moment, right? That means I'm at the bottom of the stack. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hope it makes sense. Moving on. So, uh, transitions, right? So, how do we spell transitions? Um, as I said before, it's separated into three spaces, okay? Um, there are three sections, okay? So, the first section, uh, empty string, comma, empty string, then arrow, and uh, dollar symbol, okay? So, the first space, the first space, it means that I'm going to read nothing, right? Well, in my particular case, right? So, uh, the, the, the first symbol should be the symbol you read in. In my case, it's nothing, so I'm reading nothing. 
the next symbol is the symbol I'm popping I'm trying to pop off from the stack okay if it is possible if it's impossible then I will not be able to do it so I'm reading from the stack nothing so I'm reading from the string nothing right I'm um, popping off the stack nothing and then the last section is the symbol I'm pushing okay so basically in this case when I transition from this state to this state right so at the very beginning I can accept right if there is nothing um, if the string is empty I can accept um, but the, if the string is not empty right and then I'll have to read something then I can go from here to here um, yeah so reading nothing popping off nothing and uh, so basically stack is not changed right and I'm going to push a dollar symbol on top of the stack okay so at the very beginning it's it's a dollar symbol okay so right now after that I don't have anything left um, only one dollar symbol uh, on the stack okay and then here here I'm going to loop okay so here's what I'm gonna do I'm going to read zeros, right? Because again, at the beginning I have zeros. I'm reading zeros. I'm going to uh, pop nothing because the only thing I have there is a, a dollar symbol. So I'm popping nothing, and I'm going to be pushing, pushing um, zeros. Okay, which means if I try to uh, process this string, right, I'm going to have zero zero, right? So I'm going to have zero here and then zero again. So I'm going to have two zeros. So basically, if I have millions of zeros, then I'm just it will, be, it will be looping on this state, and I'm going to have millions of zeros in this stack. Um, I guess yeah. So that that should be pretty simple to understand. Okay. Now let's say, for example, if I have three zeros, three ones, right? So in this case, I'm going to be having. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. So zero zero zero. I'm, I'm going to have three zeros. And then the next symbol is one, right? So what does it mean? The next symbol is one. Uh, that means I can, will not be able to loop anymore because in order to loop, in order to make this transition, in order, in order to follow this transition, I need to be able to read zero. I will not be. I'm not able to be read zero because the next symbol is one. Okay. So the next symbol I need to be reading is one, which means I need to go from here to here. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. So which means I need to be looking for a transition on one. Okay. So transition on one will go from this state to this state. And that's going to be, I'm going to be reading one, right? So I'm coming to the second phase of the reading the string, right? Second half, hopefully. I'm reading one. I need to be popping up the zeros, right? So that's the strategy. Uh, whenever I'm reading zeros, I'm um, pushing them. Whenever I'm reading ones, I'm popping off the zeros which I read before. And I will be um, pushing nothing, okay? Yeah, so... The first one I'm reading, I'm going to transition on this state, and I'm just going to be, I'm going to pop off one zero, right? And now I have two more zeros, right, to pop, right? Hopefully two more, two more ones to read. So I'm going to be looping on this state exactly with the same transition. So I'm going to be reading once, uh, popping off again zeros, and then empty string. And then empty string. Whew. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna be doing that. And then at the end of the day, again, the idea is that I should have no zeros left. So I'm going to read second one, uh, third one, right? So they, they will be popped off. Okay, I only have empty stack. And now, um, if if I'm in that situation, I need, I need to accept, right? So how do I accept? I need to make a transition on empty string right because i i finished reading the, the entire string um popping off dollar symbol right meaning that i'm emptying the entire stack and uh, pushing nothing okay yeah and in that case i accept okay hope it makes sense hope it makes sense okay cool uh let's take uh, well first off let's take a look at the formal definition okay and by the way, the, so the uh, the designation and um, the this text, I'm taking that from another book, so it's not a new book. Um, just keep that in mind. I don't like how it's explained in the book. That's why I uh, I'm using like a more advanced book to talk about pushdown automatons. Okay, so formal definition of PDA. PDA. Okay, uh, six tuple. Okay. 
cube sigma special character okay so sigma capital sigma um, now there is a like a Cyrillic G kind of like gamma capital gamma lowercase delta okay um, Q0 and F okay so uh, capital Q Sigma gamma lowercase delta Q0 and F okay so uh, we pretty much know the majority of them so Q is what is um, finite non-empty set of states okay now Sigma is the same thing as we uh, saw before right input alphabet okay so keep in mind um, that input alphabet is the alphabet from which we can take uh, letters from the for the strings we're reading right so for example in this particular case the input alphabet is zero a set of zeros uh, sorry sorry set of zero and one right so only zeros and ones however however there is something new which is called gamma okay and that's the stack alphabet okay and that's something we can define ourselves for example again um, just if we remember like our example uh, what we what we could see on the stream only zeros and ones right so we're not allowed we would never 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 see anything else on the stream right however on the alphabet we can push whatever we want for example in our case we're pushing dollar symbol and you can introduce your own symbol you can introduce uh, another symbol second symbol I think we will we'll be talking about an example when it's beneficial to introduce like I don't know um, some other symbol so it's an alphabet right which is a set of characters um, which it's uh, yeah and it, you can define it on your own right so basically it uh, but most of the times it's going to contain some symbols which are not in the alphabet not in the input alphabet okay so stack will, will basically be a set of symbols and usually it's a bit a bit bigger than input alphabet okay then Delta um, transition function okay we'll talk about that in a second no okay then Q0, right, is a start state. Start state, so it's only one. Um, F, capital F, is a set of accepted states. Okay, a uh, subset of Q. Okay. So what is delta? Delta. Um, let's think about that. Delta is a transition function. Okay. So what do we need in order to know where so what uh, kind of what's the domain what's the domain right so what do we uh, need in order to know where to uh, where to transition we need to know what input symbol we're reading right we need to know um, which symbol we are popping off and we need to know which symbol we're pushing okay so we need to know three things which basically means that it's going to be a dot product of um, Q okay so an element of Q um, with an element of input alphabet right united with E because it's possible that we will also it's possible that E uh, it's, possible that it's possible that Sigma doesn't have an empty string but we do um, unite uh, and uh, so product of Q sigma and then gamma, so um, yeah, union of gamma and E. Okay, and that leads us to what? So that's the domain, and what's the region? Who the region is? Um, one of the states, right? Yeah, one of the states. Mm. Okay. And what is that? That's a that's a power set of that's a power set of Q, right? And um, gamma with E. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, that's the region. 
Perfect. Okay, now let's get to the examples, uh, the most interesting thing. One of the examples which you guys have in the book, I'm going to show that to you right now, is the um, how can we create a PDA for balanced brackets. Very popular example, very popular problem in computer science. The idea is that I want to create a PDA which would accept all the strings with where the brackets are balanced, which means like, which means that something like this, like three opening braces, brackets, three closing brackets, is balanced, right? Um, so this is balanced, this is balanced, this is balanced, um, this is not balanced, okay? This is not balanced, this is not balanced either, okay? Hope it makes sense. So it's kind of like those braces in Java, right? So if I have like three opening braces, I also need to have three closing braces, and um, every opening brace needs to be followed by a closing brace, right? So I cannot have like a closing brace before the opening brace. I cannot do that. Um, yeah, what's interesting is that in Pushdown Automata is just done super, super easily, okay? So I, I, I would recommend maybe like pause here and then think about it for two minutes, okay? But if you don't want to, you can just not pause, and I'm going to give you um, the answer right now. So here's how it works. Here's how it works. Um, imagine you have a stack again. Okay. So what should I have on the stack, right? Um, obviously, the number of closing braces and opening braces should be the same, right? Okay. So that's definitely true. But also, but also, um, an opening brace should be first, and then the closing brace. So, for example, if I have a string like, I don't know, like this. Okay, so that's balanced, right? So what I can do, um, if I'm reading the opening brace, I'm pushing something on the stack, right? If I'm reading another opening brace, I'm pushing it on the stack as well. If I'm reading the closing brace, I'm going to be removing the one, the 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 previous opening brace I uh, pushed, right? So I'm basically going to be removing this. Then I'm moving, then I'm reading uh, opening brace, I'm pushing that on, to on top of the stack. I'm reading closing brace, I'm going to remove whatever I had on top of the stack, so now I have only this. I'm reading uh, the op closing brace, and I'm going to remove um, the last symbol which I had there. Okay, so one more time. If I have the strategy is this: if I'm reading opening brace, I'm pushing it. If I'm reading second opening brace, I'm pushing it. If I'm reading the closing open brace, then I'm going to remove the symbol which I had on top. Uh, then I move. Then I'm reading opening brace. I'm pushing it. I'm reading closing brace. I'm popping that off. I'm reading closing brace. I'm popping that off. Okay, that's it. So at the end again, I have an absolutely empty stack. Okay, so how's it gonna look? What is it gonna look like? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so same thing. Um, if I have an empty string, that's acceptable, right? And then I forgot, I think it's just like only one state, right? Yeah, I think it's only this. It's super simple to look at, like that. And I think it's going to be. Yeah, like this. Okay, basically two loops. Okay, so here's what uh, what am I doing here? I'm uh, reading nothing, popping nothing, pushing dollar sign. Okay, here I'm I'm going to do the opposite. I'm reading nothing, popping dollar sign, pushing nothing. Okay, and here again, if I see an opening bracket, opening parenthesis. Then I am popping nothing and I'm pushing open in parenthesis. If I'm reading close in parenthesis, then I'm popping open parenthesis and um, pushing nothing. Okay, that's it. Yeah, so try um, maybe try to work through these strings with this uh, push down automata. It will help you to understand. It will help you understand how they work. Okay. So that's number one. Uh, second example. What else wanted? I wanted to show you. So I already showed you zero to the n, one to the n. Okay, that's good. 
Oh yeah, okay. Uh, something similar. So, um, okay, PDA for palindromes. Palindromes, okay. Um, again, very, very simple, simple approach. We already know that, I'm sure you know, that if I take a stack, okay, and if I'm pushing like symbols, for example, A, B, C, D, E, and then if I remove symbols from that stack, they're going to appear in the opposite order, right? So that's basically the idea for the for the palindromes. I'm just pushing the entire string on the palindrome, and then I'm going to uh, just remove them in the opposite direction. That's it. Okay, so PDA for palindromes uh, for the, uh, what is it? against, I think that's the technical term, against the alphabet, Uh, zero one. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what's it gonna look like? Let's see. Again. Um, except in state. Then a couple of more. Okay. Pretty much the same structure. So it's kind of like similar to a zero to the end, one to the end, right? Because like, um, we're gonna have, mm, well, not for palindromes, hold on. Is it a palindrome? Palindromes, palindromes, palindromes. Yeah, palindromes, yeah, okay. Um, so, um, okay, what do I do here? I do exactly the same thing. I'm pushing the uh, dollar symbol, right? So reading nothing, popping nothing, pushing dollar symbol. Right, and here I'm going to do the opposite. I've written nothing, popping dollar symbol, pushing nothing. And here I'm going to be looping, right? So, okay, exactly. Yeah, so I'm going to have two. Okay. So, um, what do I do here? Um, I'm reading either 0 or 1, right? That, that's why I have two transitions. So let's say, for example, I'm reading 0. Uh, what am I going to push? I'm going to push the, the same symbol, 0, right? And uh, pop nothing. Uh, no, hold on. Uh, pop nothing. And pop nothing and push 0, okay? Here I'm going to read 1, pop nothing, push 1, okay? And then in the second half, when I get to the second half, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to uh, read, if I'm reading one, right, that means um, on the kind of on the other side, right, on the other half, I need to be popping off one and pushing nothing. And here I need to be reading zero, popping off zero, and reading nothing. Okay, cool. So the question is, what is this? Uh, and that's technically, that's kind of two transitions, okay? So that's either, either, if you have even amount of symbols, right, even amount of symbols, then you reading nothing, uh, popping nothing, and pushing nothing, okay? So it's basically like empty transition, completely empty. Um, if you have odd number of characters, then you would... Um, I don't know, read 0 or 1, I'll place it that way, but maybe uh, you should do a third transition. Either 0 or 1, pop in, mm, what, nothing, and push in also nothing. Okay, kind of like skipping that uh, symbol without any effect to the stack. Okay, so for example, if I have a, a, a string A, um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, that's... Uh, that's um, a palindrome. It's a palindrome. Okay. So imagine I have a stack. It's em empty at the beginning. Um, dollar symbol first. Okay. Then I'm reading zero. So I'm pushing that zero. So I'm, I'm located in this state, right? I'm reading zero. I'm reading another zero. I'm reading another zero. And I'm reading one. Okay. And then, and then. I'm going to non-deterministically, okay, so that's, so a PDA can be deterministic, can be non-deterministic. So in this case, it's a non-deterministic PDA. I can non-deterministically decide to uh, uh, move to this state, 
okay, without without any uh, symbol, right? Without reading anything, without pushing anything, without popping anything. So you can basically see that, like, you don't really need. You can you can take this transition at any moment, right? So that's why it's a uh, not deterministic PDA. Okay, then I not deterministically decide to guess that to, to move over here, and next I'm going to uh, read. 1, remove this one, read 0, remove this 0, uh, read second 0, remove third, second 0, read third 0, remove third 0, and then um, just go from here to here, and um, um, remove uh, dollar symbol, and then you would accept. Okay, so the way PDA accepts is that the stack should be empty, and the entire string should be read. Yeah, that's, um, that's the rule. Okay, hope it makes sense. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay, so uh, please, please, please read the book. There are a couple of very nice examples. Uh, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Uh, by the way, I wanted to tell you that one of the things I would tell you is that um, October 28th will be our second meet term number two. Okay, um, 75 minutes long. Uh, 29th, right? 29th. Yeah, so it's a week from now. Um, yeah. So midterm number two is 75 minutes long. Um, everything closed. Blackboard based. Right? Midterm number two is 75 minutes long. Everything closed. Blackboard based. October 29th. Um, yeah, not comprehensive. Okay, so you don't have to learn um, everything, you just need to know everything from the first midterm up until uh, Tuesday. If you guys have any questions, uh, need any help, I'll be glad to do that on Tuesday when I see you. Okay. Um, hope it makes sense. Please expect the homework to be due on Monday. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.